Hello everyone, it's Sharon with Sharon Sews. Welcome to my channel. I have a pattern review for you today. It's for a sweatshirt. I know I've mentioned before that I'm not a huge fan of sweatshirts because this is typically what they look like and I don't find it a particularly flattering look on me. When Itch to Stitch put out a call to the pattern tester group to test an upcoming sweatshirt slash hoodie pattern, because I'm not a fan of sweatshirts, I wasn't sure that I wanted to test the pattern, but then I saw the line drawings for the pattern and changed my mind. It is the Llama hoodie and sweatshirt pattern released today, January 18th, and I love it. I love it. I love it. Should I keep saying that? I am wearing my test version. The fabric's a little wild. It's very, very bright in person. I'm not sure how bright it's coming across on film. I was able to tone it down just a little bit when I took my tester photos. This tie-dye fabric is like 1960s tie-dye meets 1980s neon. It is bright and bold and fun, and I really like it. All right, let me read you the description, and I need my glasses. The llama hoodie and sweatshirt is perfect for a casual day when all you want is comfort and style rolled into one. Designed for sweatshirting fabric, you can use a brushed French terry or fleece-backed jersey for maximum coziness. The llama has many seams in the front and the back for great fit and easy color blocking. View A has a lined three-piece hood and thumbhole sleeves, and view B has a cowl neck and cuffed sleeves. The PDF pattern comes in 22 sizes. It goes from a 00, zero which is a 31 and 1 8 inch bust, up to a size 40, which is a 60 inch bust. And my favorite part, it has a separate piece for a full bust option. So while it doesn't have the A, B, C, D, double D cup options that some of her other patterns have, it has that option for the fuller bust. That is really what sold me on sewing this sweatshirt. I sewed a straight size eight with the full bust option and I love the fit of it. It's a loose fit without being sloppy. I did shorten the sleeves by three quarter inch. They're probably still a little longer than some might like. I like my sweatshirts to come down a little bit on my hand. The other thing is it's got these great inseam pocket right here, which you can tell. It's kind of like a kangaroo pocket, but it's not sewn on the outside. It's sewn into this princess seam. So it's almost invisible unless you have your hands in it. It's just the right size. Oh, I was going to put my phone in there to show you. I'm actually filming this with my phone, so that won't work. Just trust me. You could put your iPhone in there. You could put your keys in there. I have to tell you, when I was testing the pattern with this inseam pocket, I was afraid that the pocket shape inside, because it's not one, it is not one piece inside. It's two separate pocket pieces. And as I was testing the pattern and putting this together, I was afraid what was going to happen is that pocket inside was going to flop down. And it doesn't. It's a pattern drafting miracle, I guess. I didn't expect it to work and it does. Let's put it like that. It's those little details that make a little bit of a difference in your pattern. On these pockets, the inseam pocket, this portion that could potentially show when you're wearing it is cut out of the fabric that you use to make your sweatshirt. Inside is a different piece of fabric. In this case, I used a lightweight cotton jersey that was a coordinating color. If you sew the version with the hood, it's also fully lined. The back, as you can see, also has princess seams, and then it has like a yoke up front, and we have raglan sleeves. The raglan sleeves have a little dart at the shoulder, which I think is a great little feature. I chose to sew the version with the cowl neck. Let me show you the cowl. See, nice and big, nice and big. And then we have grommets for your drawstring. You can certainly do buttonholes if you don't want to do grommets. I always get a little bit nervous right before I do a grommet and I always, always test it first on a piece of scrap fabric with the interfacing so that I know it's going to work. You may notice that my ties are self-fabric. 
I ended up making them to match because I was unable to find anything that coordinated with this wild fabric, which you would think tie-dye would go with anything, but apparently it doesn't. White didn't look right, black didn't look right, gray didn't look right. I tried a pink, but it was the wrong pink. All I did is I cut, I think one and a half inches wide by 45 inches long, put it right sides together, stitched both ends, stitched it all the way up, half inch seam, left an opening in the center, turned it right side out, and stitch that opening closed, which actually it's inside this casing. I probably wouldn't have even had to stitch that opening closed because this is never coming out. And I will tell you also, I didn't knot them at the end until after I had inserted it into the grommet. I had to find a very, very, very tiny safety pin that would fit through the opening of this grommet. The grommet I used is what I had on hand and it was one eighth of an inch smaller than what the pattern recommends. So be aware of that when you do edge grommets, make sure that you're able to get a safety pin or something in there that you're going to be able to thread your cording through. This sweatshirt is designed for a minimal stretch fabric. So you're gonna want something that's between 25 and 35% stretch. She recommends sweatshirting fabric, French terry, and as she mentioned in the description, a fleece-backed jersey. My French terry has 30% stretch and it's fairly lightweight. I purchased this at So So English. I actually purchased it after I had seen Stacy Sews on Instagram post a tie-dye sweatshirt with fabric she purchased from So So English. I went right over there and hit that buy button. We kind of enable one another, don't we? Or I like to say inspire one another. That's better. We inspire one another, don't we? That's what it's all about. We get to share our love of our hobby together. With all the different seams on the sweatshirt, it is perfect for color blocking. And that's what I was going to do. I knew I had this tie-dye fabric in my stash and I thought, well, anything's going to go with the tie-dye. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't. Um, I was kind of thinking I could use this lilac that I had purchased at SR Harris. Not really. It's a little bit, it pulls it out a little bit, but I thought it was a little bit of a stretch. And I said, well, white will definitely go. Yeah, not, yeah, not really. No, yeah, not really. I mean, nothing really worked. And I thought, well, black, well, black works with my leggings, but obviously I couldn't find any fabric. I had my stash to do color blocking. I did not have time to order anything. So I just made the whole thing out of tie dye. As with all patterns from itch to stitch, this new release will be on sale for a limited time. I have a link in my description box. It is an affiliate link. Just be aware that if you, if you purchase using that affiliate link, I do receive a very small commission and it's no additional charge for you. It's one way you can help support my channel. Well, that's it for today. That's my review of the new Itch to Stitch Llama hoodie and sweatshirt pattern. If you enjoyed the review or you just want to support me, please give the video a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, I would really appreciate if you would subscribe. And until next time, I do hope you're having a great day. Be blessed and happy sewing.